Yeah. So they have a base out there? They do have a base. Okay. Uh, where, where has, uh, what are some of the places that uh, being in the Marines has taken you? So in the Marine Corps, last year I was able to go to Iceland, uh, England. Those are the two main countries. Um, I've been all over the West Coast. I've been in California. I had my, my schooling over there. Trained in Virginia for six months. And then with the Naval Academy, I was able to compete in boxing in Ireland. So military in general, you're able to just travel all over the world. The Marine Corps is really good about that as well. Um, we are a department of the Navy at the end of the day, so I kind of think of us as one big happy family. But, yeah, there's a few of the places. Uh, just like wrestling, if you make it to that high level, you get to travel the world. It's also, like, kind of another thing that they have similar, um, getting to see the world. And the Marine Corps getting to see the world in wrestling. So... You, you reminded me, being a part of the Navy here, as we got uh, Australia being hit for passivity, being a, a, a part of the Navy, man, that would be that would be so cool if uh, the United States Naval Academy could add women's wrestling, Absolutely. obviously, becoming an emerging sport. There's a lot of schools that could potentially add it. Man, imagine the Naval Academy adding wrestling and then kind of feeding into that into base. The, that Marine the, the Marines train The Marine wrestling team trains in North Carolina. Absolutely. Right? I think that would just be uh, uh, truly incredible. Um are there any other schools that you would like to see get uh, a women's program? Obviously, you want all of them, but any that just kind of come to mind you think could have a big impact right away? I mean, I can't think of any specifically right now, but I'm telling you, when I was applying for schools in college, I was looking at wrestling, and the biggest thing was there weren't big schools, good, like really, really good schools that had women's wrestling. So mm -hmm. to me, I was like, well, am I going to have to give up wrestling to go to the Naval Academy where they don't have women's wrestling? And I, and I decided to because I wanted the best education I could possibly get. I wish that it wasn't the case for women anymore. I wish that they could just look at a good school and go, hey, it's a good school and there's good wrestling and not have to. I'm not saying, like, give up an opportunity, but, you know, go to a smaller school or somewhere that they may, may not actually want to go to. Because a lot of these girls want to go to big state schools, D1 schools, because they're very smart, have really good grades. Uh, academically inclined, and they deserve to go to those kinds of schools and be able to wrestle at the same time. Absolutely. You, you talk about right now the, the women's uh, college wrestling really being carried by smaller schools, schools who, you know, on the NCAA level or maybe Division three or right. you know, maybe even NAIA. Uh, Miss Skidmore here is looking uh, for a fireman's carry. Let's see if she can finish it off here. She already got the shot clock point. And she'll take a 3-0 lead. She's going to be attending Augsburg University, right? So awesome. a smaller school in, in Minnesota that just, uh, I believe, actually reinstated their women's program. Uh, but to your point, right now we've got a lot of colleges. They don't have programs yet, but they're developing RTCs, Clubs, right? Wisconsin, right. North Carolina, Iowa. Um, so there are being there are steps being made by by the college programs, the Division I college programs, to, to bring the women in. Um, I'll, I'll bring up another great point. So I boxed in college in big schools, you know, UW, Iowa, mm -hmm. every single one of those schools had a club team for women. Really? For boxing. So when I was competing, I was competing against big schools. Regardless of that fact, there were still only five or six women, you know, maybe in each weight class due to the competition being very new for women in boxing, but there were still opportunities in all these big schools for women boxers. So when I look back and I see, you know, how many wrestlers are in, you know, this sport that are female and how still there's still not schools that have clubs or, or like big teams it kind of it it's interesting to me i think that mm -hmm. you know boxing figured it out so shoot you know <laughs> maybe wrestling should too so well i'm sure they're they're uh they're, they're working steps on are it. being taken and there. you know you look at the the olympic level right we now have uh an equal number of olympic weight classes for men's and women's freestyle both, exactly both at six it used to be you know seven and four uh and same number of weight classes at the at the uh, World Championships as well, 10-10. And then even here at Fargo, you know, at the junior level, there's 15 men's weights and there's 14 women's weights. So exactly. the the, uh, the the progress is being made to kind of even things slowly out. Slowly but and surely. Yeah, yeah. And, and just the the number of – while the number of participants in wrestling is going down, as kind of it is in all sports, it's going way, way up in women's wrestling. And obviously a huge part of that is the state, uh, state tournaments, you know. Exactly. Now – you got to wrestle in a sanctioned state tournament back in, what, 2011? 2011, yeah. Some of these girls even now don't get a chance to do that. It's true. What was that like it's for true. you coming up knowing that, hey, I have an opportunity to be a real state champion, not just in, you know something organized by people who are trying to further the sport? I was truly blessed. And I remember coming here and seeing you know some schools or some states with three or four girls, maybe even one or two. And I felt bad because I realized, man, I was given a great opportunity in Washington to be able to wrestle full brackets every year, you know, an actual state title, real state tournament with medals and all that. 
And some of these girls have never experienced that. And the only time they've ever experienced that was here at Fargo. Mm -hmm. um, or they'd probably have to travel other places and go compete in other tournaments sure. far from where they live. So I, I was very privileged to have that in Washington State. And, and it seems like the, the West is really leading the way, right? California, oh yeah. California Washington, Texas. Hawaii. Um, so it just seems like the, the West is doing a good job. I tell you, the Midwest really starting to catch up. Illinois sure. and Missouri have done yep. tremendously uh, this weekend. And then New Jersey starting to sanction Pennsylvania, having Wyoming Seminary. So it's slowly starting to move back east. And, you know, Il Illinois historically dominant in, in men's freestyle. Absolutely. Greco here. It was only a matter of time I before <laughs> <laughs> their, their women's team was going to start exactly. coming up. I will say, though, that it's not just wrestling that this is happening. The change mm -hmm. is happening in the Marine Corps. It's happening everywhere. When I was at the Naval Academy, women weren't allowed to be in combat arms. Combat really? arms is anything with, like, machine guns, shooting, getting down in the dirt, tanks, AAV. So I'm an amphibious assault off officer. So basically I, I drive these big old amphibious tanks <laughs> from ship to shore. Have you ever seen the World War II movies? Sure, sure. You know, the guys with the cigars, and they're mm -hmm. like, assault the beach. So that's my job is to command <laughs> these vehicles. A little that different than them. <laughs> right. I'm a little different than them. You know, five foot six Hispanic female. Now, that wasn't an opportunity for us to do those kind of jobs until 2016. Slowly but surely, more and more women are becoming integrated into combat arms, into the Marine Corps. So it's awesome to see that, not just in wrestling, in boxing, but in the Marine Corps, all across the board. Um, women are really getting into combat sports, getting into combat, you know, whatever the case may be. Marine Corps, Army, Navy, so it's, it's awesome. It, it, it's interesting you brought up that point as uh, they head over to the edge here. It's going to be white powered. 103 remaining, Skidmore leading Estrella 4-0. But it's interesting you brought that up. Uh, Coach Chris Ayers, who uh, he and his wife had a big part in the sanctioning of Jersey, he, he was talking to me in an interview about the evolution of, of women's sports and yes. how it went from you know, uh, judge-based competition to team sports and now into combat sports. And so um, that evolution, as you were saying, happening, not it, it's all kind of happening together. Absolutely. Um, so opportunities for, for women are growing. Uh, I wish I could bring my Marines out here to see this. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. Some of them are blown away that I can do 20 pull-ups because they didn't <laughs> think that women could do that. But every single girl out here can do pull-ups, so... <laughs> Um, they could probably outrun my Marines too. So, <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got some hammers here at this level. Absolutely. We've got, uh, you know, some of these young ladies are uh, also going to be competing at the Cadet World Championships here in a couple weeks. Uh, Skidmore was, uh, I believe, either second or third at the World Team Trials, and now Incredible. looking to close out a Cadet, or excuse me, a Junior Fargo title here. Final 30 seconds against Estrella. Uh, Estrella coming hard. Try and chase it down. Wisconsin, another state that has a very strong uh, tradition of women's wrestling recently. Is they're going to stop this? 23 seconds to go. We just saw Hawaii get one. Can they get another one? We're about to find out here, folks. Final 20 seconds. But, uh, Ms. Simon, we appreciate you, you coming on here for, for a couple matches, sharing your perspective, uh, and getting to see some, some high level wrestling. Are we going to get Absolutely. a last second win from Estrella? And I think Gabby Skidmore is going to hold on. Clock was out. They're gonna. There's gonna be a brick. The clock was out, though. They throw a counter brick just in case. <laughs> I love it. Wisconsin. Take the blue. Take the blue over. Red cannot. I think. I'm gonna be honest. I think uh, Coach Coach Kevin Black was it just in case <laughs> they gave the two. He was gonna throw it out there. Oh, that was intense. Uh, bef before we let you before we let you go, and we bring Willie back on here. Who uh, who was coaching you at at the, the U.S. Open the World Team Trials? Was that uh, Melissa Simmons that was that was with Melissa you? Melissa Simmons was, and then uh, Lieutenant Zaleski. Okay. He actually spent you know, some of his yep. He spent mm -hmm. some of his own time every day at like eight o'clock at night training me because mm -hmm. I had to work my full regular day with my Marines and then train on my own. So I didn't get to train with the wrestling team, the Marine Corps wrestling team. So I had to do that whole training, two three months of training with him. And it, I took a seven year break from the sport, so getting back into it was really hard. It's a long break. Um, <laughs> and then to go into that level, US Open World Team Trials, it was a slap in the face, but at the end of the day, being there and experiencing that was phenomenal. And I hope that I could use that experience to work on my wrestling career later on down the road. Right now though, I'm a Marine. I'm dedicated <laughs> to being a Marine, leading my guys. In wrestling, if it does present itself later on down the road, I'm 100% all in. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, as we said, Gabby Skidmore ended up closing this out. Uh, First Lieutenant Simon, did I get it right this time? Yes. First Lieutenant Simon, again, thank you for sharing your